Welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Emily Nimzikant here at the Nebraska Library Commission filling in for your regular host, Krista Burns, is away today. Um, Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event hosted usually by Krista Burns um, and covers a variety of library activities including things about stuff here at the NLC, things of interest to the library community generally presented by either NLC staff or guest presenters. These one-hour sessions are free and offered every Wednesday at 10 o'clock Central Time. And they include things like presentations, interviews, web tours, mini training sessions, Q&As, various things like that. Um, today we have Laura Johnson, one of our NLC staff here. She is going to talk to you about some government resources on the web. Take it away, Laura. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, we're going to talk today about .gov, the government on the web. Um, I have to tell you that um, this is a very long presentation. Um, when I thought about doing this, I knew that the government had a big on presence. One second. Oh, somebody in the audience said that they are not getting any sound. Oh, dear. Um, if somebody can hear us, can you please type something to the question box and let us know that we are actually transmitting all right? Oh good, I'm getting, yes, several that say they can hear. Excellent. All right, go ahead then, Laura. Okay. Um, I knew that the federal government had a huge presence on the web, but I, I um, didn't get into this very far before I realized that it was ginormous. And um, I was going to have to make some decisions about how to do this. So I've decided, I decided to make slides because that would be a little bit faster. Um, and uh, I had to select things to present uh, rather than having everything. Today we're going to cover the 15 departments in the President's Cabinet. Um, I did send out a uh, handout for everyone with all of the links on it to everyone that had registered yesterday. I sent this. Um, if you want it later, just uh, give me, drop me an email. I'll be glad to send it to you. It's just a little Word document, but it has all the links. Um, so don't worry about trying to take down URLs because, you know, that will make you crazy. Um, let's just get started and see um, if we can move pretty much through this. Um, Is this going to... It's not. It's the space bar, right? Not for the arrows. Well, let's try an arrow and see. An arrow did it. Okay. Uh, as you know, you know, the federal government has the three branches, executive, legislative, and judicial. An awful lot of the government um, departments that we deal with are in the executive branch. Today we're going to deal with the executive branch. Of course, the big one of the big pieces of the executive branch is the Office of the Presidency. And I had to make a decision and I chose to say, okay, I'll do the 15 cabinet departments, also part of the executive branch, and we'll deal with the Office of the Presidency um, the next time we do one of these. We said we would do it again in September and then again in October, and I don't know. We'll see if we can cover it all in that amount of time, or we may go on forever, I don't know. Um, so, uh, this is the executive branch, the cabinet departments, uh, it's a quick tour. All the departments do have a basis in law. That is, they will tell you the sections of the U.S. Code that authorize the department. Um, the, one of the places to find out about the um, departments is in the U.S. Government Manual. Of course, uh, an old print publication, it is now on the web. Um, and it will list all the departments, it will list the officers in the department, and then it will give you a link to their website. Another place is USA.gov, which is sort of the federal government's portal to um, departments. You can either get a list of departments or you can go by topic to find something. Um, useful, but tends to be kind of broad sometimes um, when you're doing research. Another place you want to look is fedstats.gov. This will find statistical information in federal um, 
websites. I will kind of emphasize statistics because they're really difficult. Uh, you can't just Google always. You can't always just Google and get statistics. Sometimes they're kind of buried in tables and things. So we'll be talking we'll mention statistics fairly often throughout this uh, presentation. Um, I've put the um, things in alphabetical order because there seem to be no real reason not to. Um, so let's go. Uh, we'll start with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, it has a uh, budget of about $132 billion, uh, employs about 106,000 people, and um, it really is concerned mostly kind of with rural life, with food. This is what they say their um, mission is, um, leadership on food and agriculture, that kind of thing. Um, so here are some of the pieces of their website that I think a reference librarian um, or someone who was trying to help their um, library users would find particularly useful. When I chose um, which things I'd be showing here, I kind of had a few things in mind. I wanted resources for librarians that I thought would give them um, useful information. I wanted to find things that were typical of the cabinet websites, so I show them as examples. And then um, the opposite side of that, things that were kind of unusual. So I'll try to be pointing out sort of types of information as well as particular pieces of information, if that made any sense. Um, the first thing from the USDA, the Economic Research Service, um, a thing that does, well, research on food, on agriculture, on rural life in America, um, and really a good source of information if you're interested in, in those kinds of subjects. Um, really a, a good place to start for anything about that. Uh, the U.S. Forest Service is part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. One of the things you do find is you start realizing that many of these departments started in one, or many of these entities started in one department, one cabinet department, and have moved around. Um, over the years, you know, different cabinet departments were in charge of different things. Right now, the USDA does have the U.S. Forest Service, which is not the National Park Service. The National Park Service is part of the Department of the Interior. Uh, Smokey the Bear, by the way, is U.S. Forest Service. Ask Karen of food safety education. You can put in little questions or um, find topics about, you know, how long it's safe to keep eggs in your refrigerator and things like that. Um, a nice uh, consumer-oriented sort of um, utility that they offer. Um, another thing, plants database. Um, it's, a, it's a great big database. I did a search here for goldenrod, the Nebraska uh, state flower, and here they give us a nice little profile of the plant. So. That's another thing that, uh, you know, could be very useful um, if people are looking for flowers or plants. Uh, the National Agricultural Library, one of the big national libraries is part of the USDA. You can search their um, catalog. They call it Agricola, Latin for farmer. Um, and uh, a really nice source of information. Also has a lot of information on women's issues or used to. And um, if, if you're a collector, uh, has a complete set of the prints from the um, old um, yearbooks of agriculture that were the, the watercolor prints of fruits that people collect. So anyway, the National Agricultural Library is a very interesting and large uh, body of information. Uh, the Nebraska Rural Development, I put this here because um, many of the programs, the really big programs from cabinet departments, are actually kind of administered through the states. The cabinet department will then send out uh, money, usually, and sometimes, you know, directives, I suppose, to a state, to departments that are in states. So Nebraska Rural Development is one of the departments that cooperates with and gets funds from the USDA. Um, 
the Cooperative Extension Service would be an example of this. That has federal funding, but then it's in the states. Um, and then another consumer um, kind of uh, site, Choose My Plate. Remember the old food pyramid that told us, you know, what foods we should be eating every day? Well, they have discontinued that now, and now it's your myplate.gov. And um, this is, you know, tells us what we should be eating every day. This is an example of something that they seem to be doing more and more, which is instead of having a utilitarian URL, they try to have a descriptive URL, and they give it, a, so this isn't part of the USDA dot blah, 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 you know, this is choosemyplate.gov. And we'll see this again and again, that they have their uh, kind of, these especially consumer-oriented kinds of things have their own um, more descriptive URLs, but they're always .gov, um, so you, you can kind of tell that way where they came from. Um, okay, we'll go to the U.S. Department of Commerce next. Um, the Department of Commerce is uh, concerned with business. It has a um, budget of $9.3 billion, so it's smaller, about 44,000 people. Um, the President Obama would like to reorganize this department, and that means he would take pieces of it and put it with other cabinet departments and stuff. Um, but meanwhile, this has some interesting things in it that you find, you know, useful. First, the Patent and Trademark Office is in, under the Department of Commerce. You can search for patents or trademarks, although if you need uh, searches for, say, legal battles or to um, see if somebody else has already patented an idea or something, you do need a search from a, a patent attorney, somebody who's an expert on it. But you can go in there and search it and find very interesting things. Um, another thing they have is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Now, most products and industrial things in America do have to conform to standards. Standards are not generally created by the government. They are created usually by a trade organization uh, because pretty much every product in America has a trade organization. Those standards then uh, can be found at that trade organization or the American National Standards Institute, a, a, an independent organization, will um, adopt those standards. And if you need to find a standard, and this would happen if, say, a bridge collapsed, and the structural engineers wanted to show that the steel in the bridge did not conform to the standards that were um, in force at the time the bridge was built or something. You would need a standard for that kind of steel. Um, these can used to be really hard to find. Today you can find them, although standards you will rarely find for free. You'll usually have to pay for them. This is a list of places you can find standards. So it's a good place to start if you need a standard because it will lead you to places then where you can go to get the standards. Although, as I said, you'll probably end up paying for them. Um, but it's nice that they're kind of giving us some guidance here. Another thing in commerce is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And you think, oh, well, that's nice, but that means it's the Weather Service. The National Weather Service is part of the Department of Commerce. Here's the weather for Lincoln, Nebraska for a couple of days ago. Um, you can also get some historic facts about weather. Again, an important thing if people are having lawsuits because there was a um, automobile accident six months ago and they want to know if it was raining or not, or foggy. Um, so you need historic weather. Um, but this is a good place to go to get your weather. And um, the, the weather station here is in Valley, Nebraska, in fact. Um, but uh, then also the Census Bureau, which, of course, is a huge entity. The Census Bureau does the decennial census that is mandated by the Constitution, where they count, uh, it's the census of population and housing, they count people. Um, they have a nice utility that they have developed 
uh, the American Fact Finder, where you can search the um, database, the census database, and, and find the, the statistics you're looking for. Um, there, it now covers uh, the 2010 census and the 2000 census. I think there are a few things from the 90 census, but I'm not sure. Very often you will hear people talk about, oh, they've just released the 1940 census. Well, this is for genealogists. Um, census material that they collect about any particular person is confidential, and they keep it confidential for 72 years. So in uh, 2012, they released the 1940 census, so 72 years ago. And genealogists can now see um, information about particular people. They, the Census Bureau puts out some really nice publications. And here's an example of one that talks about the availability of census records about individuals. This is a PDF. You can go to their website and find it. They also have fact finders about finding other kinds of statistics and other kinds of information that I think are terrific. They're really great guides to how to do this. Um, so the Census Department not only provides us with up-to-date information, um, and they do, um, between decennial censuses, uh, they do not, you know, go home. They do a lot of other um, fact-finding. In fact, they collect a lot of statistics for other departments. Um, but anyway, the Census Bureau puts out Census Bureau numbers. <laughs> Think about that. Um, the next one is the Department of Defense. The Department of Defense, of course, is the largest cabinet department. It employs 718,000 civilians and uh, 1.4 active military and about 1.1 reserve military, but about three and a quarter million people in the military. Um, so it's a huge department, a uh, budget of $550 billion, which is over half of federal discretionary spending. So this is huge. Um, they have, their mission, of course, is to uh, run our defense. Uh, they have a really nice list of the websites that are defense websites. Many or most of these websites are not .gov. They're .mil, because they're military websites. Um, of course, the Air Force, Army, Navy. Uh, the the uh, Coast Guard is part of the Department of Defense in time of war, but in time of peace, it's part of Homeland Security. Um, so I'm not going to say a lot about defense because that's sort of its own subject altogether. But um, it's a huge department. It does have a nice finding list where you can go to get additional information. Okay, the U.S. Department of Education. This is the smallest cabinet department. Uh, has 5,000 employees, a budget of $71 billion, although the ARRA funding, the um, uh, what was it, recovery funding, was significant. It was almost $200 billion from 2009 to 2012. So all of a sudden they got a big influx of funds, but the Department of Education itself is not huge. Um, they establish policy. They don't actually do educating. They establish policy. They collect data, they oversee research. Um, some of the things they have, uh, a nice um, thing on federal student aid. So if people are looking for uh, Pell grants or federally uh, insured loans or things, uh, they have a lot of information here which would be of interest to people. They also have, which I thought was really kind of interesting, a database of accredited uh, institutions of higher education. So if you're looking at a, a school or one of your library patrons is looking at a, a school, uh, you can go here and see if it's accredited. They do not do the accreditation. Accreditation is done by various um, organizations, associations, but they collect the information. So you can look here to find out if someplace is accredited. Another thing from the Department of Education is ERIC. The education um, is research or resources, I think, information center, great big database of uh, information about education. It includes journal articles, research reports, even books. Um, 
Eric, of course, can be accessed through First Search, which is part of Nebraska Access. Um, but Eric also has its own website. Um, it is not a full text database, um, but the records are very meaty. They have good um, summaries of things in them. Eric has its own particular vocabulary. Um, and if you do a lot of Eric searching, the, th the Eric thesaurus can come in handy. But uh, Eric is a, another one of the big, big sources of information. You know, it's a big index. It's a big source of information. Then education also has the National Center for Education Statistics. I told you we would be talking a lot about places where you get statistics. It turns out that if one place collects, because statistics are really very expensive to collect, and the government collects, oh, a huge amount of statistics. Uh, if somebody collects a statistic, chances are no one else will collect that same statistic. They might collect a statistic in the same area that's slightly different, but um, chances are a government statistic on a particular thing is the statistic you're going to find. Uh, the National Center for Education Statistics, of course, puts out a big um, annual um, report. They collect things on, oh, student, uh, how many kids drop out, uh, what, how much school districts spend per pupil, how many people are on, um, you know, federally um, supported lunches, all kinds of things. Uh, so this is the place to go if you need any uh, information on education statistics. Then the next one's the Department of Energy, which um, does a lot of research, mostly, on um, energy. And it's also got the, um, um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, so, for instance, you hear about these labs, the Argonne National Laboratory, the, um, Collide, the, the one in um, Batavia. Fermi National oh, Lab, yeah. all these labs are part of energy, and they have some very interesting uh, information. Then the next department is the Department of Health and Human Services. Now this is the, um, they put out about a quarter of federal outlays, partly because um, this is where Medicaid and Medicare money comes from, but also they administer more grant money than all of the other federal agencies combined. Yeah. They are underwriting an awful lot of medical research. So their mission is to help, you know, keep Americans healthy. So what are some of the things under uh, Health and Human Services? Well, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. You'll hear about this whenever there's an outbreak of a particular disease, flu or something, uh, the Center for Disease Control um, will uh, do research on it, see where the outbreaks are and that kind of thing. Uh, under the Center for Disease Control is the National Center for Health Statistics. Again, a huge collection of statistical data on health issues. Um, so another, a place where you'd want to look. Um, they have, HHS is the Food and Drug Administration. Now we know that the USDA uh, is concerned with food, and now here's the HHS being concerned with food. Well, the USDA does um, inspections of meat, poultry, and eggs. Other foods are um, the FDA. So, um, and of course the, the drugs, whether new drugs can be put on the market and that kind of thing. Are, organized by the FDA. They're also the Public Health Service. Now this is where the Surgeon General comes from. The Surgeon General is the head of the Public Health Service Commissioned Corps. They all wear uniforms. Um, so, kind of an interesting fact. Um, another thing, the National Institutes of Health. There are a number of National Institutes of Health. Remember Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of NIM? 72 Newberry winner. Um, that's one of the National Institutes of Health. Another part of the National Institutes of Health is the National Library of Medicine, one of the big organizations, uh, one of the big libraries, 
the big national libraries. And of course, they put out um, Medline. Um, they do a lot of um, educational programs themselves on the kinds of materials that you can get there. Many of these materials, of course, for medical journals are really written for um, experts and they can be kind of tough for your layperson to interpret, but they also have some information for lay people. Um, but the National Library of Medicine here in um, Nebraska, the um, Nebraska Medical Center is, um, works with the National Library of Medicine. Um, then they have the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Again, see, this is called Medicare.gov. So this is another one of those um, more descriptive URLs that they're moving toward. Um, they have tried very hard to make Medicare a little easier for people to understand, but there's still a lot of material here and you have to go through it kind of carefully. This is one of the things I would um, want to encourage anybody to do when you go to one of these websites is, or you know, have a goal, do one a week or something, but look around. They have some of the most amazing things here. I have to tell you how impressed I was. I, I kept thinking, well, this is where all our tax dollars are going. These people are doing great stuff. I mean, there's, there are all these services and things in these departments that you don't always think about, but it's, it's kind of astonishing when you get them all together. My goodness, all the things they're doing. Um, okay, the next department is the Department of Homeland Security, and this is the third largest cabinet department. About 240,000 people work there, budget of about $60 billion. Homeland Security, of course, is a fairly new department, um, and several things that were in other cabinet departments were kind of moved into Homeland Security. So the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Um, Customs, of course, if you've ever shipped anything, uh, imported anything from another country, you have to fill out all these, uh, you have to conform to all these regulations and fill out forms and things. Uh, border protection with the Border Patrol. Uh, FEMA, the um, Federal Emergency Management um, Agency, uh, will react to any, um, well, emergency that we have. Um, and this is part of Homeland Security now. The Citizenship and Immigration Services is where people get their green card or become citizens. Used to be part of the Department of Justice is now part of Homeland Security. Uh, the Coast Guard. Remember we said that the Coast Guard is part of the Department of Defense in times of war, but in time of peace is part of Homeland Security. Then the uh, Transportation Security Administration, the people who will frisk you at the airport. TSA. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff here about um, information on flying. If you're wondering about, you know, what exactly can I pack in my suitcase and my carry-on, it'll tell you here. Um, so, um, you know, they've tried to make it uh, provide information to people that they think people will need. So. That's Homeland Security. Then the next department is the Department of Housing and Urban Development, mostly HUD. Excuse me. Is concerned with um, financing housing. Um, about ten thousand people work there. Forty-four billion dollar budget, um, and they do. They want to help people own homes, really. Um, they have a uh, the Federal Housing Administration, which kind of regulates and looks over some of this stuff. Um, they have these neat graphics. I thought these things, these infographics were kind of cool. This was kind of buried. You had to go to resources and then to data sets and then to infographics. But these are the factors that people thought were important when they chose their neighborhood. I, I thought this was kind of cool, um, the way they presented this information. Also, I thought it was an interesting example of something that was neat, but you had to really dig for. Um, and this is what I mean about look around these websites when you have time, because there, there really is a lot of interesting information. 
Okay, Ginny May, the uh, federal um, agency that insures mortgages, or actually, no, they don't insure them. They're the ones that package mortgages and, and make them mortgage back and sell mortgage backed securities. Um, they have some interesting utilities for the consumer. This is a, um, a calculator on, I think this one is uh, a loan estimator. They also have should you rent or buy, uh, how big a mortgage can you afford, um, what mortgage rates, you know, they have several utilities. You can find other um, kinds of calculators like this on the web, but I think one from the government I don't know. Do we trust it? I think we trust it more. Um, so again, they're trying to offer things that they think the average consumer would be interested in and would find useful. Next department is the Department of the Interior. Uh, 71,000 people, $20 billion um, more, um, budget. They manage about, they say, 500 seven million acres of land, which is about a fifth of the area of the United States. Uh, they have 388 national parks, monuments, seashore sites, etc. 544 national wildlife refuges through fish and wildlife. So they're really talking a lot about our, nat our, our natural resources. Um, and tribal communities because, of course, this is where the Bureau of Indian Affairs resides. <clears throat> they also have the Bureau of Land Management, which is looking over all that land, and the National Park Service. Remember, the USDA, we talked about the National Forest Service. This is the National Park Service. Um, and part of the National Park Service is the National Register of Historic Places. And this will explain to you how you get on the National Register of Historic Places. And it has a search where you can find listed the places. So I searched um, for Nebraska, for Cherry County, which is that great big county out in western Nebraska that does not have a huge population, but they still had 13 historic places. And then you can go and um, actually link to pictures of the places, get some information about the places. So this is very interesting. Now they did say uh, that it's not currently working in, in, uh, in IE. It works in Chrome and Firefox. So just a tip if you're, you know, going to go search this. But um, kind of interesting. Uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is here in the interior. And the U.S. Geological Survey. Why is this important? Maps. The U.S. Geological Survey are the people that do the mapping. So especially if you're looking for... Um, uh, topological maps, things like that. You want to go here. And they have a library and they have an Ask a Librarian program. So you can put in your question. So if a kid is doing something about geology or earth science, he can put in his question here and they'll try to answer him. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, we can all find out about volcanoes then. Um, but that's the Department of the Interior. Then we get to the Department of Justice. Justice has about 112,000 employees, $28 billion budget. Um, and what Justice does is really um, they handle the court cases that um, involve the federal government. So the U.S. attorneys um, do the trial work. They do criminal and civil cases, and they do collections of debts that are not administratively Collectible. I'm not quite sure what that means, but that's what they say. Um, the other part of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is part of the Department of Justice. And they have a great thing of statistics, the Uniform Crime Report. They do the crime statistics every year. And they also have hate crime statistics, mortgage fraud reports, all these other kinds of statistics. So if you're looking for crime, here's where you go. Um, but then there's the Bureau of Justice statistics, too, and this gives you, you know, number of incarcerations, prisons, that kind of thing. 
Um, so sometimes, as I said, um, generally if, some, if one agency or entity collects the statistic, no one else is going to collect the same statistic, but they might collect statistics in the same area that would be a little different. So you may have to look at both these places, um, but for crime, for you know how many muggings there were, you want the uniform crime statistics. Uh, they also have the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. They have the U.S. Marshal's Office, who protect judges and witnesses and things. Um, that's the Department of Justice. Then we have, how am I doing on time? I'm doing pretty well on time. I'm zipping right through this. Um, we are um, here. We're on slide 78. Um, this is the Department of Labor. Uh, labor is concerned with working people. And um, we have about 17,000 people work for the Department of Labor, budget of about $13 billion. Um, one of the things you might think you would find at the Bureau uh, or at the Department of Labor would be the um, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. No, that's an independent agency. Um, but labor does have the Bureau of Labor Statistics, another huge source of information about people working, average wages, um, uh, unemployment figures, and one of the really interesting things, the Consumer Price Index, which is the measure of inflation. That comes out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Here's an example of some kinds of things the Bureau of Labor Statistics does. Um, the percent of total employment. So people who um, are in education, training, and library earn an average of $50,870 a year. Um, and they are a little over 6% of the um, people employed in America work in that area. So, you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics does put out a huge um, lot of, of information and they do articles, remember the monthly labor review, that, that journal comes out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, they also put out the Occupational Outlook Handbook, used to be that great big orange book. Um, I don't know if it's still even in print, but it is on the web. One of the things that you would certainly want to look at if people were investigating careers, uh, young people, you know, uh, kids in school, or uh, people who are just looking for a, a um, career change or whatever. Um, the Occupational Outlook Handbook is one of the first places to go. Uh, they have the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, which will talk about um, hazards in the workplace. I thought this was funny. Health hazards in nail salons. Um, but they do a lot of um, workplace standards. Um, they'll do a lot of things on materials. So if you're interested in, you know, the, the chemical effects of some kind of cleaner or solvent or something, chances are you could find it at OSHA. Um, this is a program that they're starting, uh, Distracted Driving, that's what we're calling it now, Distracted mm -hmm. Driving, um, and OSHA has a program. We'll see this later in the Department of Transportation, too. They're also doing Distracted Driving. but. Um, this is, you know, the government tries to deal with things that they think are issues. And so this is the kind of thing you see. Okay, our next department is the Department of State. I think it's very funny that we jump from L to S, all the way to S, but we do. And the Department of State, of course, is our uh, foreign service and our um, international relations. There are about... Um, 11,500 Foreign Service employees, 7,400 Civil Service employees, and about 31,000 Foreign Service Nationals working for the State Department at a um, budget of about $27 billion. Um, they have some really interesting information. They have a list of countries of the world. I selected one of the countries and clicked on it, Kosovo, and I got this nice little uh, page about it. They gave me a map, they showed me the flag, and then I can go for further information. They put out a um, 
and they have links then to fact sheets. They used to put out a thing called background notes on different countries. It's now fact sheets. But these fact sheets, you know when you have those school reports where everybody has to do a country? Well, these fact sheets can give you great basic information. Um, they keep them very updated. Um, this might be something that you would even consider printing and having in your library, although, you know, you can always get them on the web. But the information about countries is great. Um, then they also have, you can get um, updates. So I signed up just to see what would happen. Um, and yesterday I got a message saying that they had updated the fact sheet on Zambia. And they gave me a link to it. So this would be a great way to not only have these fact sheets, but you can keep them updated. Um, I thought it was very nice. I, I liked it. Uh, okay, they also put out the list of our embassies, consulates, and diplomatic, diplomatic missions. So this is where our embassies are around the world with links to them. And they have their own websites, many of these embassies. They have a Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. And this is about... Um, cultural and educational exchanges. Who knew that the Fulbright scholarships are administered by the Department of State? I didn't know that, did you? Mm -hmm. um, these are international exchange scholarships and they're part of the Department of State. Another thing here is the youth page on Department of State. Now, many of these departments have particular pages or materials for children or for uh, use in schools or curriculum kinds of materials. So this is something to look for in all the departments. I only picked out a couple to show you, but the Department of State for Youth is here. Uh, the Department of State also has information on doing business in other countries. You can search this. I searched the U.S. Commercial Service to ask for how to do business in Brazil. And I got back uh, in the apparel and textiles industry, and I got back an 86-page report. So if somebody was going to uh, export materials, this would be a great place to get basic information. So again, another place to get information about countries. Uh, they also have the U.S. Commercial Service. They have the, um, the uh, country commercial guides that we talked about. And it was a long, big thing. They also will give you a lot of travel information because remember the Department of State is where you get your passports and visas. You may go to your local post office, but it's the Department of State that's actually issuing them. And you can go in and look, ask about a country, and they will give you specific information about traveling in that country. So another uh, people who are um, ready to take the tour, um, this is a good place to go for information. So they have several places in the Department of State website itself where you can get information about countries. The fact sheets, the commercial service, the travel information, you can really find out a lot right there. Okay, the next department. We're, we're coming, we're, we're doing pretty well here on time, and we're, um, we're getting to the T's. So we're, we're getting there, guys. Um, this is the U.S. Department of Transportation. They're interested in planes, trains, automobiles, and our highways. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you, here's the mission. Uh, they want our transportation, you know, and our, our um, U.S. highways, that kind of thing. Is a briefing room. Uh, almost every department has either a briefing room or a newsroom or a list of um, press releases. So if there was something that happened quite recently, that's the place to go to see if you can find out about it, their, their briefing room or their newsroom, what they've put out quite recently on a particular subject. Um, okay, and another part of the transportation, the Department of Transportation, the Merchant Marine as part of the Department of Transportation. Then, of course, the Federal Highway Administration. Um, and see distracted driving. We're back to that. And they have, if you dig down, and I had to really kind of dig down for this, 
that they have a national bridge inventory, honestly, a list of all the bridges. I searched for the bridges in Nebraska. I got a table of all the counties, and it listed, I picked Douglas County had the most bridges at 495. That's the county where Omaha is. Arthur, Grant, and McPherson counties didn't have any bridges. <laughs> um, of the 495 bridges in Douglas County, they said that 66 were functionally obsolete and 19 were structurally deficient. Um, so, you know, it, an interesting thing. Somebody's got to keep track of those bridges, I guess, and they do it. Um, they also have national traffic and road closure information. Yes, you can dial. It's 511, isn't it, to get... Uh, information, but they also have it here on their website. Um, another part of the Department of Transportation is the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, which um, regulates air traffic. And again, statistics again, I keep harping on that, the airline on time statistics and a lot of other statistics too. But here's where you can get those. They have a, a thing where you can search for statistics on particular airlines. And, see, I told you, we're back to distraction.gov. Um, they're really concerned about distracted driving because, of course, it does cause accidents. Um, so I don't know if uh, the Transportation Department and OSHA are going to work together on this or not. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. The departments work together. But... Um, the Department of Transportation also has information on distracted driving, which may end up being a good uh, subject for um, papers in high school this next couple of years. Um, so we come to the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Now, what does the Treasury do? Well, basically, they collect money and they pay the bills. That's kind of where the Treasury is coming from. 116,000 people a um, budget of $13 billion. You might hear of the Federal Reserve and somehow that in your mind, because it is in my mind, connected to the Treasury. No, no. The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. Um, so you have to understand that. But the Internal Revenue Service is part of Treasury. It's, of course, it's a big agency. I think they've tried pretty hard to explain more about what's going on with um, in the IRS, what the regulations are. Um, they have the forms here online, so that's the Internal Revenue. They also have the U.S. Mint that makes the money, or creates the money. They're, well, anyway. Um, and the Mint has a really nice little newsletter for kids. So again, this is another one of those pages specifically uh, designed for school children, for use in schools, that kind of thing. Um, they also have the Bureau of the Public Debt, which um, basically, this is where you get your savings bonds. The Bureau of the Public Debt sells three kinds of government securities, T-bills, T-notes, and T-bonds. T-bills are short-term, just a matter of a few days to 52 weeks, and they're sold at a discount. Treasury Notes have maturities of two, three, five, seven, or ten years, and they pay interest every six months. And Treasury bonds have a maturity of 30 years, and they pay interest every six months. So the Bureau of the Public Debt um, is keeping track of what we owe. Um, so that's the Department of the Treasury. Okay, we're back to the last one, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. This is the second largest department, so the US, so defense is the first largest and veterans affairs is the second largest. 279,000 employees, a budget of about $88 billion. Um, their mission is to serve veterans. They talk a lot about veterans benefits, including the GI Bill. Um, they also uh, deal a lot with veterans health care and they have these health topics A to Z. You can search these and I thought they were generally written at a very understandable level. They're pretty general but they're good. You know, I looked up gout. It had a nice explanation. Um, they have an office of rural health which for um, some people in Nebraska 
uh, can be useful. Is this something we should? Yeah. Okay, we won't worry about that. Um, so for anything for veterans, this is the place to look. Um, they also have, and I thought this is an interesting and useful, potentially useful for librarians to know about, the uh, na Nationwide Gravesite Locator. Any veteran who's um, buried in a, in a national cemetery, um, you can find out where simply by using this locator. They don't have um, data prior to 1997, although if you need older data, you can write to them and ask them about it. So um, if you need to find a grave, this, it, you know, this is, uh, genealogists might do this. Um, some people might want to know this. So this is a, a, a nice service that they have. So that was it. We got there. I did it. That was really fast, wasn't it? Um, but um, I hope this has given you an idea of the, the breadth of these um, departments and what they're doing. Um, I've given you just a few um, samples from their websites, but I hope that's given you an idea of kind of the kinds of things you're going to find there. I would suggest that you do look around if if you have the time, some of these are huge websites. Um, some of them are much easier to use than others. It was it was very funny the structure of some of them. The Department of the Interior I thought was very clear how they organized themselves. Um, Homeland Security is trying to be friendly, and it makes them very hard to use. Um, so uh, that's just my opinion, but. I thought this was interesting. I had a really good time doing this, by the way. Um, there's nothing like, you know, kind of searching for buried treasure, which is sort of what I felt like I was looking for here. Um, we are going to continue and try to do um, more federal websites because, of course, this is just the cabinet, just the 15 cabinet departments. Um, this is me. If you need to send me a line, uh, please do. If you'd like the handout, you didn't get it yesterday. Um, I'll be happy to um, send it to you. Um, although our things are also on Delicious. Right. The links are also on Delicious. Our next um, Fed on the web is going to be uh, September 19th. I, at that time, I am going to try to cover the White House, the legislative branch, and the ju judicial branch. That may be optimistic. Um, but I'll get as much done as I can. And then um, we're going to have a third session in October. And at that point, I guess we'll decide if we need to go on or not. Mm -hmm. So um, there you go. The cabinet on the web. Does anybody have any questions? We have about five minutes. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, either um, type them into the question box. Or if you do have a microphone, um, just type in the question box that you have a microphone. And you want me to unmute you. And you can go ahead and ask the question over your microphone. Um, so far, we just have one comment coming in. Great overview and love the handout. Thanks. Oh, good. Well, I hope I haven't stunned everyone into silence here. Um, I think it's just with a good food for thought. Like, well, you know, there, a lot of things, yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. Pursue it um, as they have interest. Any other questions, comments? It doesn't look like it. Um, if you do, wow. you have Laura's contact information, so I'm sure she would... Definitely not mind you getting in touch. Oh, no, I'd be happy back. to. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we will be back next Wednesday, as usual, for another edition of Encompass Live. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.